And there it is. Okay. Sorry, sorry. I think I can unmute myself. Oh, good. You go. You okay. You go ahead, Joanne. Okay. I'm going to try to so, spotlight you. Yeah. Okay, I'm just going to start off with saying that although April is natu National Letter and Card Writing Month and the month when we originally had scheduled Laura to come and speak to us, um, we're very happy that she was willing to come back this fall. So Laura Moulton is a writer and a teacher who lives in Portland with her husband and her two teenage children. She graduated with an MFA from Eastern Washington University, and she works in public schools, prisons, and on the street. She's an adjunct professor in Lewis and Clark's Northwest Writing Center, and I hope she'll tell us a little bit more about her Truth and Dare class. That sounded interesting to me on her uh, website. She does writing residencies for teens through the Literary Arts Writers in the Schools program and at the Brooke Bodecker Foundation, which I'm not familiar with. And she's founder and executive director of Street Books, which she began in 2011, a bicycle powered mobile library for people living outside and at the margins. She also co-wrote a book, The Crowd Might Cover You, with Ben Hodgson, who's a man that she met living outside in Old Town in 2011. And then she also teaches at Sitka, which is where I was lucky enough to take a letter writing class from her in the summer of 2019. I've always been an avid letter writer, but Laura's class motivated me with new ideas to spice up my correspondence. She used interesting prompts, which maybe we'll hear one tonight, and reading excerpts from books and articles such as Letters of Note by Sean Usher and the article by Brian Doyle with the link in our newsletter that was entitled Letter Literature, where letters are referred to as papery, papery handshakes and cries from the heart. She even motivated me to give my niece the gift of three months of weekly postcards for her fifth birthday this year, describing the adventures of various creatures in my country yard. So without further ado, let's enjoy Laura's presentation tonight. Thank you. Thank Joanne. you. Thanks yeah. so much, Joanne. Um, and thanks for having me. I feel like uh, we did plan to um, come, you know, bring this together in April. And uh, as we know, a number of very strange things happened and we find ourselves here. Um, I'm going to, Let's see, is it possible to okay to enable share share screen and I'll you bet. Um, show you all something. Um, Hang on. Uh, just one second. I will say that um, that class at Sitka, that if you're not familiar with Sitka, um, the Sitka Center is out on Cascade Head um, Ranch, just above um, the ocean, basically, just north of Lincoln City. And they teach uh, art and ecology uh, writing classes. There was a guy teaching a um, wooden spoon carving class when we were out there. Um, and it is such a dream. It's an incredible place to be just anyway. But then the idea that I could be there and teaching and talking about letter writing was just sort of like my head was near exploding. And I, I very clearly remember um, Joanne's beautiful calligraphy. I was so struck by her work um, and, and the envelopes that she produced. And at the end of the class, we traded addresses and sent a, a message to a random person from the class. And I know that, and, that people were crossing their fingers that they got Joanne's um, letter. So um, let's see here. Okay, that looks good. Thank you so much. Um, okay, so I just want to uh, walk you through several slides and then I, I, I do have a short writing exercise we'll do and then I'm happy to 
um, have sort of a conversation or a Q and A if there's time. Um, the work that I do, I think um, Joanne, that was a great introduction. And I just wanna show a physical picture of the street books bike. Um, that's the original bicycle and we have two libraries now. They're basically rolling libraries. And this is me on a shift um, in summer uh, a couple of years ago. Um, and then across the bottom there, you can see the pictures of different people with their books. And basically street books um, is, the, is an art project that I launched. It was supposed to be three months long. My goal was just to bring books and reading glasses to people who I felt like were the, the least likely to have been invited to anything for a while or to potentially to access the Multnomah County system, even though um, you know, they were working to make it low barrier. I knew that people might just not um, be able to take advantage of that for lack of ID or proof of address, things like that. Um, and so imagine my surprise, it's more than 10 years later, this project is still going. And I think it's in large part because uh, when I showed up near the end of what I thought was the, the, the three month project, I had guys there waiting to return their books and check out new books. And I realized I had started this thing and it was not gonna be easy to just say, all right, thank you for the great art project. You know, good luck guys. And so it's been very exciting to build. It's, it's um, hugely successful in part because of all of the good people that have come forward and said, I'd love to help with this project, what can I do? Um, and as Joanne alluded to, um, we, I'm, uh, I have a book in progress. It's not finished, but um, I'm co-writing it with Ben Hodgson, who you can see on your screen. He's the bearded fellow um, in sort of the tan coat in the, on, on my screen, it's bottom left. Um, and I met him that very first summer and we struck up a conversation. He was, um, distressed to find that I had no PG Wodehouse on my um, library that day. And when I said that I was aware of Wodehouse, but I'd never read him, Ben was kind of horrified and said, what kind of street librarian are you if you don't have PG Wodehouse? And so that's how we struck up this friendship. And um, he is doing very well now. He has uh, an apartment and he's been a very long time board member and now a street librarian for us. And so he operates shifts in Old Town um, where I first met him, where he used to live. And that's a very exciting part of the project that he's done so well. Um, but that is, um, and I will say if, if I have time, I wanna swing back to Ben. Um, his name is Ben Hodgson, we call him Hodge. Um, but I received a beautiful letter um, connected to Ben. And so I wanna um, mention that just at the end of our time together tonight. Um, but the other, um, Joanne kind of mentioned this, and so um, I'll skip uh, my bio, but I do have a website, lauramolton.org, where you can find out information on the other projects. Um, but I wanna hop to um, letter writing and just sort of look at um, the idea of letters as a gesture. And I was thinking a lot about ways that we use letters um, and um, ways that I have used letters. And so I, you know, connecting through a pandemic was um, a, a very early gesture is when I wrote to my parents and just tried to describe what it was like in March when first school was called a week early ahead of spring break. And then it was just kind of called. And then it was like, we were looking down this long stretch of time um, where maybe school would never start again before summer. And now of course, here we are Schools kind of never started again, except we're doing the virtual thing. Um, the idea of reaching out to voters during an election. Um, many of you may have written to undecided voters in different uh, states across our nation. Um, the idea of letters as a practice. So I was thinking about um, meditation, about how we can copy poems and art. Um, but I was also especially thinking of calligraphy um, connected to meditation and the idea that that art is kind of the ultimate slowdown, I would think. I'm not a good, um, I love writing and I love writing in tiny black script, but when I try to do something fancy in calligraphy, it's clear I'm very untrained. And so I love watching someone um, who can do calligraphy well, uh, because it's such a beautiful process. Um, 
And so it strikes me that that you all are onto something very um, deep with just slowing down in that in that way. Um, it's also I find um, sort of the opposite of scrolling on a phone. And so anyone that is sitting down and just spending time doing that, you're already ahead of the 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 masses with our digital addictions. Um, the other idea is, is using letters as social justice and notes of support. This can come in the form of op-eds, um, supporting our leaders, our politicians. I went through a period of time where I just wrote notes of support to other executive directors who I knew were really in the thick of it with their nonprofits, trying to provide housing for people, trying to um, figure out how to feed people. And just, I just wrote um, little thank you notes. Like I notice I'm seeing what you're doing and man, I'm so impressed. And, um, and I got some responses that were like, holy cow, that's tacked up in my office now. Like I look at your letter every day because I, it's been, you know, however many years since I got a handwritten note, you know? Um, and then the last one here, I would just say is the, the idea of the birthday letter bomb. Um, I just had my birthday um, in October and my husband, um, unbeknownst to me, spread the word to friends and colleagues and family. And I think I got like 40 something or 50 letters in the mail, postcards, um, drawings, and it was the coolest present. I turned 50 and it was the coolest thing I could imagine. It was better than anything he could have bought me because it gave people a chance to um, say nice things and to kind of reconnect. And um, if you have um, people in your lives who are coming up on a birthday and you can kind of rally um, for this kind of thing, I would really recommend it because it was, it was just, um, it was such a lift, you know? Um, so I'm curious, I know that it's a big, it's a little bit of a big group, but I was curious about whether people had, um, I have what have letters meant during this time. And if, if a couple of people um, wanted to weigh in, um, they could either write in the chat and maybe you could call on them or um, I'd like to allow time for a little bit of weighing in, but I know we don't have tons of time. Let's see. If anybody wants to say something, if you can just, oh yeah, putting it in the chat's a good idea. And then, uh, or I'm just gonna look at my participants. Does anybody want to respond and just unmute themselves? Yeah, I'd just be curious about whether people have written, have, have uh, picked up a letter practice, a letter writing practice, or received a notable one, just what people's experiences have been during this time. I can tell one story myself, which is that um, we lost our beloved dog uh, this, this last month, and we um, got a note from the vet afterwards and all of her care people had written a little note about what a special dog she was, what a wonderful dog. And she had been a rescue and was really scared of new people and they had all put in a lot of effort for her. Mm. And that they loved her just really meant a lot to us and that we had a card with all their personal notes and memories. So that's, that's my- oh, That's really special, yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, I can comment, Carol, if you want. Yes, please. Um, I was a letter writer before, but I have a friend, um, Gail Broderick, who actually studied under Lloyd Reynolds, whom I would see and go out for lunch like once a month. Well, she lives in uh, Terwilliger Plaza. We're not going out for lunch anymore. And so we have been writing to each other. In fact, I have one here that I could show you, but I mean, she's just ecstatic when she gets one with paste paper and colors on it, it just lightens her day and she loves to go pick up the mail and show it off. So I'm sure it's been showed to 20 people by the time she even gets up to a room, but then she reciprocates. So this is somebody who I didn't write to before I would see in person, but with the pandemic, 
now we have become letter writers. So there are several people like that in my life that I used to see in person and now we write. We can, we can do email and we can phone, but you know, it's different. That's Particularly great. if you have an art background like she does. I mean, she's so appreciative of everything. Yeah, I love that. Thank you, that's a great story. Bailey and I have operated the Correspondence Club at Grout Elementary School for the last, uh, certainly the last year, maybe year and a half, which has been a ton of fun. Kids love putting postcards in the mail and it's been kind of sad not to be able to interact with them because we don't know their home addresses and are not writing to them directly. But I did get a letter the other day from a student who, who left Grout two years ago. She's a seventh grader now and she wrote to me the other day and told me about her life. Uh, it was huge. In fact, I read it aloud to my family and they said, when you write back to her, you're gonna have to lie to write a letter that's as interesting as that one. <laughs> Oh, I love that. Oh, I'm so glad there's a correspondence club at Grout. That's such yeah. good news that yeah. letters live on with the young it's, people. It's been a lot of fun. That's terrific. And it does strike me, you know, I'm, I'm very connected to the elementary school in my neighborhood. And I saw when the pandemic hit, um, a, you know, mutual aid in the form of teachers and local community members really spring into action to deliver um, you know, food to porches of families who were really going to struggle and also art supplies and things like that. But I feel like there is that there is the block to getting kind of a letter writing, um, you know, little micro system going just because of that, not having addresses of kids and I'm sure the district having to protect kids uh, privacy. So it's a that, tricky. That's a big part of it. Yeah. Yeah. That's great though, thank you for that story. But it. many PSC members have written letters to those students and a number of people have already written to me tonight to say, let's keep doing it. So if you wanna write letters to young people, let me know. Oh, that's great. Thanks for that. Anybody I, else? Maybe one time, one last story and then we'll, we'll keep going. <laughs> yes, this is Melanie. Uh, we have, I work for 911 and um, friends of my director uh, told people in his community um, about our 911 dispatchers, 911 dispatchers and call takers. And we received a huge packet of letters from children of all ages thanking our call takers and dispatchers for working at 911. Wow. Something we've never received before. And it was unsolicited on our behalf it was solicited on our behalf. We didn't know it was happening. It was just a gift. And it's so touching and amazing to just hear from people you don't get to see uh, their thanks and to um, really to celebrate that they thought of you just enough to write the, the note. So that's terrific, man. That's really touching too. And, you know, I think it's interesting, isn't it? It's, there's such a series of things we're realizing um, you know, emergency uh, responders and nurses. I mean, you know, a number of people that we did not put on signs in our yard and we didn't, you know, step out and uh, cling pans at a certain time every night uh, in tribute that we really should have been doing all along, right? And so that's so cool to think of, of kids getting a chance to send thank yous for that. That's lovely. Yeah, thank you. Um, let's keep going just in the interest of time. Um, I think Joanne mentioned letters of note, um, and this is just, uh, this is one, uh, one volume of what turns out to be a number of them, um, an eclectic collection of correspondence deserving of a wider audience. And this is a really fun um, book to have. And I am a fan of, I have this book right here, I'm a fan of books and paper, as I'm sure you all are being um, um, artists, but I, I really uh, wanted to point out that if you don't have a book, there's also the website and there are tons on lettersofnote.com, examples of letters. And there are some really touching letters, some kind of outrageous letters. Um, there's a letter from a, a Chinese mother in San Francisco who wants her daughter to be able to go to school with the white kids in the neighborhood and can't understand why this child who is every bit as bright as her classmates 
is not welcome. Um, there, and, and I think that was a letter that she uh, wrote to the school board and read aloud, which was would be would have been very brave because she was not um, a native speaker of English. Um, there are letters from former enslaved men to their um, former uh, slave holders. There are um, letters from athletes. There are letters from, I, I think there's one from Ronald Reagan to his daughter. Anyway, it's just, it's a very interesting, when it says an, a, an eclectic collection, they're not uh, messing around. It's definitely an interesting mix. But among the uh, letters available uh, is one that I think we looked at in our class. Um, and I'm gonna use this tonight because I think that there's a lot of, um, there's a lot to be taken from this letter and it will lead, it will kind of give us a jumping off point for a short writing prompt um, that we'll do together. Um, and so this is the um, well-known author, E.B. White. Um, there, his bio is, around, is across the bottom there, won numerous awards in his lifetime. Born in 1899, he was one of the great, greatest essayists of his time, writing countless influential um, pieces in New Yorker and Harper's. Books include The Elements of Style, children's books like Stuart Little, Charlotte's Web for me was the, that's how I came into E.B. White as a kid. But I thought it was so interesting because this is a letter he wrote in 1973 to a man named Mr. Nadeau who sought White's opinion on what he saw as a bleak future for the human race. And I think it's, it's great to um, remember that along you know, the course of history, there have always been moments when the future seemed bleak. <laughs> I feel like we're um, perhaps just having stepped from that and are starting to see a few bits of light coming through cracks just now. But I feel like um, I very much related to this idea of um, things looking dark. And so I'd like to read this letter and then we'll just kind of um, check in about it before we do a writing prompt together. Um, does anybody want to read it? Any volunteers? <laughs> I will read it out loud. This is Deborah, if you would like. Thanks, Deborah. Okay. Dear Mr. Nadol, as long as there is one upright man, as long as there is one compassionate woman, the contagion may spread and the scene is not desolate. Hope is the thing that is left to us in a bad time. I shall get up Sunday morning and wind the clock as a contribution to order and steadfastness. Sailors have an expression about the weather. They say the weather is a great bluffer. I guess the same is true of our hu human society. Things can look dark, then a break shows in the clouds and all is changed, sometimes rather suddenly. It is quite obvious that the human race has made a queer mess of life on this planet. But as a people, we probably harbor seeds of goodness that have lain for a long time waiting to sprout when the conditions are right. Man's curiosity, his relentlessness, his inventiveness, his ingenuity have led him into deep trouble. We can only hope that these same traits will enable him to claw his way out. Hang on to your hat, hang on to your hope, and wind the clock for tomorrow is another day. Terrific. Great reading. Thank you, Deborah. Thanks for doing that. I see hands clapping. <laughs> Hands clapping silently. It's like a Zen Cohen. Um, so uh, I love this letter for a number of, of reasons. Um, and if you actually, if you have a favorite line, you're welcome to type it in the chat. And I think Carol could look at that um, and, and maybe read them aloud. That might be the most efficient way. But I, um, I just, I love the idea of the human race making progressively a more mess of life. And then the also, that idea that our ingenuity may also lead us back out. Um, anybody have impressions that stick with them from this after they look up from the page? Anything stick with you? I 
I liked the phrase or the line that says, hope is the thing that is left to us. It's a yeah. great, little, great little sentence. Yeah, I love that. Reminiscent of hope is a thing with feathers, right? Right. Emily Dickinson <laughs> poem. Right, Emily Dickinson. Mm -hmm. Anybody else? It's, it's fine. It works great to have you unmute if you want to just say aloud your line. Well, I like the line that says, uh, but as people, we probably harbor seeds of goodness that have lain for a long time waiting to sprout when the conditions are right. And that seems to me, uh, I have a girlfriend that only writes letters. She won't do email, she won't, she won't answer the phone. And so she lost her husband and we were good friends until I moved away. And so, um, you know, it's, it's been a chance for us to heal our relationship and learn about some really important things in her life. Like she has twin granddaughters now and so she has you know, hope for uh, really occupying her time in a, in a lovely way. Mm -hmm. And I never would know that unless she, unless she allowed me to know it, you know, in a, in a, in a long letter amidst all sorts of other emotions that are going on for her. Wow. It's been really rough. So now, yeah, you know, we get Yeah, to that's great. I love that seeds of goodness as well. That's really yeah. powerful. Yeah. I like hang on to your hat, hang on to your hope. Mm -hmm. It's it's great advice, right? Yeah. Good and for I like Yeah, go ahead. I like how the beginning paragraph talks about winding the clock and then it ends right after hang on to your hope, wind the clock for tomorrow is another day. That is so mm, forward thinking, uplifting to me to think of that. Yeah. Yeah, great. Also, just kind of old school, the idea of winding a clock. Mm -hmm. What a cool, cool thought, right? Mm -hmm. I liked that last line as well. Hang on to your hat, hang on to your hope. But And wind the clock for tomorrow is another day tells us that we have a part in finding that hope. It's, it's up to us. We need to wind mm -hmm. the clock. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, well, I, I think this is a good time to use this as a hopping off point. And I will say, by way of explanation, um, in the, the letter writing workshop that we did when I was with Joanne at Sitka, we, we studied this letter and then we used this as a kind of prompt to jump off and to write a little bit about what we personally leaned on or reached for, for hope, what we you know, what we turn to and what we relied on. And the way I used this um, was everyone wrote, um, dear, it was, they didn't know who this letter was going to go to, but they wrote this prompt and um, wrote about what they turned to and what they had leaned on in their lives during hard times, um, whether it was uh, poetry or um, turning to nature. There were a bunch of different interesting examples in the class. Um, but then I took those letters, people had created a, um, an address, a self-addressed stamped envelope for themselves uh, that were empty. And I mixed these up and made sure that um, everybody got a different letter from a classmate. And so it was just a cool um, opportunity to, to get insight into someone that um, on, a little, on a little bit deeper level. Um, and so I've got this prompt. Um, and for the purposes of this class, I think what would be very cool is if this turns into a letter that you send to someone and that it, um, you know, that you're able to share this. Um, but here's our prompt. Just write about what you lean on in hard times. Um, uh, the place you draw strength from uh, and turn to for hope. And this can be wide open, but we'll just take a few minutes um, to do a little bit of writing and then we'll, we'll check in. So I'll give you about five minutes and then we'll circle back up.
take another minute or two and start to wind it up. If you if you hit a rich vein and you want to keep going, just make a few notes to yourself to pick back up. Let's go ahead and, and kind of wind up the sentence that you're on. I can see a lot of bent heads still, and it's the saddest thing in the world to call people back from the, the writing on the page. So let's kind of circle back up. It, you know, if, I, if this were a letter writing workshop, um, that lasted longer than one hour. It would be so fun to circle up and hear from uh, from each of you. Um, and just, I think that that is one of the richest parts of the workshops um, is hearing uh, what people have been struck with and you know um, different directions that they've gone with the same prompt. That's always a really interesting thing. But I think that, um, this is an example. I think sometimes I have talked with friends who, who say, man, I wish I wrote more letters, but I never know what to say when I sit down. Or in some cases, friends that have written letters and um, the response they got was almost, people almost freaked by receiving this heartfelt letter in the mail. Like, what am I supposed to do with this? You know, in the age of, I guess, rapid texting and emailing, uh, what do you even do with a heartfelt letter? It almost felt like this duty they had to then, you know, sit down and uh, respond to. And so I think the people are sometimes disarmed and sometimes, um, you know, surprised to receive a beautiful thing like this in the mail. But, um, but I think it's so valuable to send our writing to one another. And this, um, this idea of it being sort of the ultimate slowdown on the page when we um, aren't looking at anything else and we're wholly focused. And that's something that I'm really interested in. Um, and so I want to just talk for just a minute about um, strategies and then um, kind of wind it up and we can, we can um, check in on questions if there are some. And I just, I wrote a couple of things that I do um, when to have a successful letter writing practice. I do teach uh, every spring a letter writing workshop at Lewis and Clark through the Northwest Writing Institute. And that's already on the, on the books for this year in the spring. It's going to happen March 20th and April 17th. And I can send um, that information out. But um, basically, we get together, um, we scheme, we do some writing together, similar um, you know prompts to the one that we just did. And then um, take off for a month and then regroup a month later. And so um, we commit um, in this workshop to writing 30 letters in 30 days, one a day for the month of April. And um, it's a really fun exercise. Um, and so I just have a couple of examples here um, on the strategies list. Um, first off, just planning ahead with a template, with pre-addressed envelopes, with things like that that make your life a little bit easier when you realize it's the end of day four and you haven't sent anything yet. Um, and you can see there the April, I just print off a calendar template from the, um, the web and I sketch out, I, I just um, fill some of the boxes with names. And so I already know ahead of time um, who I wanna send letters to. Um, a regular time each day helps. Um, during the month of April, I try to um, write in the mornings um, a little bit every morning. And that's often a great time to um, write a postcard or a letter. I also was doing this with my daughter, Sylvie, who's 13 now. She's done the last couple years with me. And so that's a practice we do in the evenings together. 
Um, the other thing that I really love is just um, the idea of the poem at the ready or a pre-written wind the clock type of prompt like we just did. Um, and I, I love sending poems. And there's a picture here of one by Dorian Locks, um, who I really love, who's an Oregon, Oregon, Oregonian and a poet. Um, and so um, for a time I sent out her poem, Anti-Lamentation. Um, and the, the great thing about that is you just, if you fold it strategically, you just have one little panel to fill and you can say some meaningful things and then um, send that poem off. And people really feel like um, they've gotten something um, of a treasure in the mail. So um, those, are, those are a few small things that I employ that, that help with, um, with being a productive letter writer. Um, and yeah, I'll pause here for just a minute and um, just wanted to check in and, and hear whether people have questions, hear whether um, people have, have strategies to add because I'm sure a number of you have done some letter writing for a long time. If anybody has something they want to put in the chat, I'll make sure it gets attended to. I was going to tell you one, um, maybe while people formulate questions, if you have them, I was just going to tell you um, one story about Ben Hodgson, who you saw in the picture on the very front. Um, he's the, the partner, the the colleague in street books now who did live outside for a period of years. And um, he and I uh, began to meet in a cafe while he was still living outside. And we would have a coffee in Old Town and just kind of talk. And that's how slowly he became more involved with street books. But um, a couple years into that, um, I he was still living outside, I feel like, or maybe he had just gotten housing. But anyway, uh, we wrote a co we co authored um, some articles in uh, Street Roots newspaper. And so he was just writing about living outside and I was writing about meeting him and what I had learned from him. And um, so that was published. And a few months later, I got a letter from his niece. Um, her name's Natalie. And she just uh, wrote and said, I read these articles and recognized and saw my uncle there in those pages and I just wanted to thank you um, for seeing the humor, his good hu you know, sense of humor and his um, humanity during a time when none of us knew where he was and when he'd really struggled with mental health and, and lived outside. And so I think of that when I'm thinking about letters and letter writing, the power of, of letters. Um, I think of, about that letter that I got from her and how that it was great to get and you know lovely and supportive but it was also just it filled in a piece of ben's story that was really also valuable to me so um so that's that's a a letter a, a great letter i received once upon a time someone is asking what the middle image is on your screen the middle image yes um like the here like so go ahead. I was just going to say the one that is written on and the, I think the back was the poem. Um, yeah, so that, that, yeah, thank you. That just to clarify, that's uh, basically a poem that is, um, you know, I just folded over and wrote um, a note on. So that little, um, that little, you know, edge of paper makes for just a smaller space to have to fill up if you're writing a letter. Um, but it is just the poem and then a, a fold over the poem. Yeah. That's a good trick. Yeah, right. It's your writing trick. area smaller. <laughs> exactly. It's kind of, it's contained that way then. And then I, I always feel like it's a little bit of cheating because it, um, it really leans on the beautiful words inside, right? I mean, part of it is that I was like, you know, second fiddle to Dorian Locks, which is totally fine. So. <laughs> Yeah, but that's a great one. Um, sending poems. I'm curious about whether others have done that or. I never. You know, Laura, I bought that 
that book for a friend who's a good letter writer. And she and I write back and forth. We've taken each letter in the book and we write back and forth about the letters. Oh, um, that's so great. Yeah, because they're such amazing letters. <laughs> but that's been a lot of fun. We're not that's quite through with the book yet, but we've been plugging yeah. along. Mm -hmm. Well, I get the impression there are a number of volumes, right? And they're kind of themed. Like there might be one that's very artist specific and I, so I think you have your work cut out for you, Joanne. You have plenty, <laughs> plenty of volumes to, to work your way through. They're just they're just such amazing letters. Yeah. What's with the cat paper? The uh, you know, it's funny. My family had a weird. Um, they had some creative project going in the background that was a cat stencil, and so they didn't need the inside of the cat. They just used the outline. And so I was finding these little cats everywhere. And I thought, you know, what better way to uh, to use the cats than to send them in the mail. But I also, um, I also those stamps, the bottom right um, stamps that I bought, I got those at, I, I'm, I'm wondering if anyone is familiar with the um, Portland Correspondence Co-op Cooperative. Um, they, I think they go, it's like uh, Portland PDX correspondence. Anyway, I discovered them. They were meeting once a month at um, the IPRC, which is a great resource, the Independent Publishing Resource Center um, in inner Southeast Portland. And of course, they are also impacted by this pandemic and having to really limit um, their group, their gatherings. But it's a great place that has um, all kinds of old letter presses and um, screen printing workshops and poster making and a bunch of different very cool things. Um, but anyway, once a month, this it's basically fans of letter writing um, would meet for the Portland Correspondence Co-op. And they've done that for years. Um, and in fact, they maybe celebrated 10 years recently, but um, there's a, a guy who runs Ace Typewriters in um, in St. John's. His name is Matt. He brings antique typewriters, and then of course a bunch of other Portlanders do. And so it, the place is full of um, typewriters. It's full of homemade stamps. People make their own gorgeous stamps. There was a guy that made a COVID nineteen stamp when we thought it was going to be some passing thing that you know, not that would cancel the event you know, for future months <laughs> entirely. Um, and people have a little um, uh, passport actually that they bring and they connect with everybody and get their little stamp, the homemade stamp in their, in their books. So I was so charmed by that. And I went maybe three times in a row when I discovered it. And then it, it was, it was shuttered for now. So um Anyway, that's just a very cool thing to know that that sort of thing exists in Portland. I was so struck when I went by how many people were there and how beloved typewriters and letter writing and old school things were. And there was a stamp guy there and, and I bought some stamps from that guy that, that week. So. Uh, I've, I've been corresponding with a contemporary of mine. I'm 78 and, and the guy that I'm corresponding with is 78. He lives in Bend. He has developed a fourth stage cancer mm -hmm. and I have been writing him a card and a note about every week and a half. And today I'm uh, actually writing him a poem, uh, a poem called Stationary Bicycle by Linda Paston. He just uh, got a Peloton, an indoor bicycle. He was, a, he was a great biker, but now he has to ride an indoor bike. So there's a wonderful poem called Stationary Bicycle by Linda Paston. And so I've uh, typed that out and I'm going to write on the other half of that. And that's my, I, I've, I've called this my bi-weekly uh, letter to him or note to him. And this week I didn't really design a card. I'm just gonna do the, do the poem and then write along the side of the poem. But it's been really meaningful to him. He keeps saying, keep it up. <laughs> so it's, it's been, a nice process that's so i love that thank you for sharing that i think that that's man that that sort of diagnosis really boils down to the essence what is what matters right and that kind of communication that kind of i mean that that's a look at how you're showing up for him because that represents such a lot of thought and yeah. 
and you know um consistency he, he, he appreciates it very much so that's, yeah that's terrific well and i'm reminded of christine calasurdo that that uh carol mentioned at the beginning of the meeting she uh is so well known for creating the her own words when she does her calligraphy so she doesn't use other people's poems or stories or you know, catchy phrases, she makes them up herself. So she would really enjoy this presentation. Oh, that's great. Well, hopefully yeah. she can watch it. I know. Because it's recorded, but that's, I, I love that. I love that idea of yeah. um, authentic, you know, the content being wholly original. Right. Yeah. That's terrific. Any other questions? I know we're starting to tip past eight, but happy to answer questions. Usually we're not such a quiet bunch. <laughs> we're slow. I know. It's, it's funny. I love, I mean, the whole reason people go into teaching, right, is because they love sitting in a circle and looking at people's faces and hearing from them. And so what an interesting and weird time that we um, have adapted and we look at ourselves in tiny squares now and we have to have this pause before we speak, which let's face it, probably that's a good exercise for most of us, you know? Yeah. Well, I'll just make a comment that um, for a while, Friends of the Columbia Gorge had asked um, some of us to address letters to their major donors, but you will notice how many things you get in the mail that have imitation handwriting. You know, they have the blue ink and it kind of looks like it's been handwritten. But I mean, they realized that um, for their major donors, it really made an impression when something came in the mail by hand. And um, now they have a new development director and it, it, it's kind of unwieldy to, you know, get everybody the envelopes that are that right size and then to get them back to them in the time. But um, I coordinated it for several years. And one of my favorite stories is that, um, uh, Lloyd Reynolds, of course, is the one who got a lot of us. He's the, was it Reed, if you know who he is, uh, in calligraphy. Mm -hmm. And um, he had a, now Gregory helped me, I think it's he had a son who's died, but the wife is alive. But anyways, uh, the daughter or son-in-law of, of Lloyd Reynolds was one of the people that received these envelopes and commented to the president of Friends of the Columbia Gorge that she was so delighted that uh, handwriting and calligraphy was still alive and being used for something like this. So, you know, sometimes people get their practice, they say, um, in italic by addressing uh, wedding invitations, but you certainly can get your uh, uh, practice in italic or any other lettering style by um, writing envelopes. And I like your idea of writing some of the envelopes out ahead of time. And that's an interesting idea. That's something I'd never thought of before. But I mean, they're regular people I like to when I see a neat envelope, why don't I just grab it and write somebody's name on it? I save envelopes. Um, you know, like in my family, when I give my husband a birthday card, I don't write on top of it. In fact, I don't even seal it. I save it for later on. <laughs> I love that thriftiness. That's such a brilliant idea. Well, I, you know, I was looking at your one with the cat behind it. I mean, most of us here, anybody that's done collage, we do save interesting stuff. And, and when it comes mm -hmm. time that you're thinking of something, you go scrummaging around and saying, oh, yeah, I remember that. Uh, well, yeah. Yeah. And I think that's a great idea. It's a great practice just to have letter writing materials around so that if you want to listen to a book on tape, which is something my family and I do some, uh, and sit, that's a great way to decorate envelopes and just sort of create some cool um, stuff to send out. And so it doesn't feel overwhelming when it comes time to to send those things out. Yeah. But you didn't you didn't mention techniques, but um, I, I, I have to find some better paper to write letters on. I'm just about of everything I had. And, you know, I'm 79, so I'm not going out and shopping. But um, one of the things I often do when I have leftover oh, paste paper, the stuff that's too small to use for calligraphy, makes great borders on the side of mm -hmm. your stationery. What you can turn just a, a plain old piece of copy paper into something really beautiful by that scrap that was hanging around that can be pasted on the side and, and look lovely. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. I would love to get a letter from any one of you. Oh, give <laughs> us your address. <laughs> Well, and I would just say, um, 
I would love if people are interested in um, doing a letter writing workshop, um, I've kind of developed that with the program with, with Lewis and Clark, sort of to address the fact that it has to be via Zoom, but um, I have some, I think, good strategies for not just having a sit and look at a screen the whole day, because that's just not sustainable. And it's not what anyone wants to do when you go to um, write letters together, right? So, so I think I have a, a pretty good balance, but that'll be later. That's um, the end of March, March 20th, and then April 17th. So we'll commit to doing the letter writing each day. And I'd love to see any of you who might be interested in that. Laura? So in that, oh, sorry, go ahead, Lee. Oh, I, wonder, I wonder, Laura, if you would compare and contrast mail art versus letter writing. Because there seems to be both some of all of that. Yeah, you know, I think that's it. I'm so intrigued with mail art and postal art. And um, I, I mean, I had a friend in college that used to mail preposterous things just to see if they would travel through the mail, like a football, I think, and a shoe once. Um, and I think that, um, I think it's interesting. And, and this is an interesting point, Lee. Um, what I realized was uh, the key difference for me was um, the lack of, like, I guess I figured out words matter to me. Um, as a writer, I'm really drawn to um, words. And when I joined the Portland Correspondence Co-op and I was getting, you could sign up each month to be part of the letter writing that month. And essentially you would commit to addressing a theme. And one, one time it was like dots and um, so I got letters and postcards that were dot related and they were beautiful. And I got this sort of dopamine hit when I would open my PO box. But I, I think what I realized was I missed a, any kind of, I was struck by like, no one wrote anything. Um, it was just a piece of art, which was, which was beautiful to get. But um, I think that um, I I'm very intrigued by the, the, the postal art that's been part of movements, a fluxus movement or da da, that kind of thing. But I also think when it comes down to it, I love um, sentiment, like I love a note of some sort, you know? But I love both. I think it's really cool. I've, I've kind of gone down rabbit holes sometimes studying different um, movements and, and art, and that's been a really cool part of it. Yeah. Uh, we have a, a note in the chat from Carol Weston saying that she once received a bear coconut in the mail from Hawaii. <laughs> That's pretty amazing. And Joanne Perry Muller basically says she sent everything in the world. Let's see, even a leather shoe sole. Whoa. Okay. Love it. Who knew? So, so Laura, uh, Joanne is also mentioning in the chat that if any of us would like to write to you, your, uh, your PO box is on your website. Yes. Yeah. And in fact, that's a great place. I, I have a newsletter, which I send out, I think maybe four times a year, if that. It's very infrequent, but I update it. I update folks. Um, on the classes I'm teaching. And so if people wanted to sign up for that, they'd be welcome. And that would be a good way to, to hear it with a little bit of advanced notice about teaching uh, that I have coming up. Okay. What is the website? Oh, it's just my name. It's lauramolton.org. I've got that over here. Yes. Spell it. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, uh, L A U R A uh, L A U R A M O U L T O N. That part. Well done. Good. <laughs> <laughs> I should be good at that, but I just stumbled on my own first name. <laughs> yeah, but I would also say if you want to find out more information about street books, um, that's an ongoing project, and um, that is is all one word: street books. Dot org, and it's street books plural with an s at the end. Um, and that is, you know, we are we are we've had to limit in some ways um, our full library shifts uh, this summer just to keep people safe. 
um, but we have continued with our outreach. And so that's, that's available on the website as well. Very cool. And let me see if there's anything more in the chat that. Carol, I, I know someone was asking about the Portland Correspondence. Is it the cooperative? Portland Correspondence Cooperative? Uh, yeah. Portland Correspondence Club or cooperative? The one that I know was co-op. Co-op. Yeah. And then another question is now that the building capacity has been limited, um are they're not meeting on zoom N not as far as i know um i think that yeah i i i haven't gotten any notification if they have been i don't think so though when i looked i i went fishing you know recently for a little bit of information um and it seems like the most logical thing to continue um via the post but i think that it's my sense is it's sort of quieted for a while so it might be something that they pick up. And, and it could be that the longtime writers are continuing to correspond. I was fairly new to the group. And so, um, so yeah. Yeah. OK. If anybody else wants to pipe up, feel free to unmute yourself. We're seeing a lot of the few people had to leave and they are um, sending profuse thanks in the chat. I think I'll go ahead and save that chat so you can see any comments. That'd be great. Sue, Sue Green says, just wrote, thank you so much, Laura. You provided a great thought provoking presentation tonight. You're a oh, great speaker great. and motivator. <laughs> That's great. Yeah, if 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 we if we march straight out and write letters after this, um, it can only be a good thing, right? Yes, and someone else left earlier saying she was just gonna kind of hang up and go write a couple letters. <laughs> That's so, great. That's an immediate yeah. response. I like that. Yeah. So, um, Laura, fabulous. next question. Yeah. Are there any homeless that? Um, could be written to if there were a way, I mean, I know they don't always have an address, but I mean, through your uh, book thing or anything like that, I'm just thinking as we're doing this, that somebody who's homeless might dearly love to get a letter. Yeah, I'm so glad you asked that, Marianne, because that we're talking a lot about that right now as an organization, ways to um, deliver sort of a radical hospitality pack during the winter during the bleakest part of the you know Portland weather and um, writing something uh, writing a note of good cheer uh, to go with a small book and a pair of reading glasses hand warmers things like that is definitely interesting to us we're, we're sort of figuring out um, the ingredients of a little pack first we're in conversation about that right now but I would love um, anyone who wanted to write, especially in a beautiful hand, um, a small note to someone. And we would be happy to deliver that. Um, we don't have it fully, um, you know, finished in terms of concept yet, but it's, it's definitely something we're going to launch probably in December um, and go through the, the winter months. So well, will you put it on your website or something? Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, and I can. Um, yeah, I think that that's probably the the most logical spot is is um, website. Yeah, because we, we can have... we can write things that just say dear friend. You yeah, know, something yeah. like that. You know, but but yeah, uh, you know, just to have something handwritten and something lovely, I think would be. Um, if I were in that situation, I would appreciate it a lot. Yeah, I think so. I think it would be really cherished. I think that's exactly right. I think we could do that. Yeah. Do you think, Laura, do you think um, that you, uh, that the street books organization could make any good use of bookmarks? Yes, any, always. We, we in fact, we've had donations of bookmarks over the years um, from uh, school kids in after school programs and things like that. But that's a, a terrific idea. We can always use bookmarks. Oh, a note with a bookmark inside it. Woo! 
<laughs> uh, who's the woman that has the, uh, the series of cards? She used to have a studio in Southeast. Um, you'll see them for sale. New Seasons used to sell them where it's a greeting card and it's a, uh, a bookmark that you can fold off. That's oh, yes. you know, like the card. Yep. But I that's, that. that's um, yeah, I often do um, bookmarks instead of birthday cards and then just write happy birthday on the back of the bookmark. That's such a great idea. Yeah, bookmarks would be great. We'd love that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, we have another note in the chat. It is a thank you that says, this is from Nikki that says, thanks so much, everyone. A great evening. Got my list of 30 folks to write to. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> so very that's motivating. You that's very cool. That. That's serious. That yeah. sounds like Christmas cards, but let's keep them going. <laughs> there you go. Well, Laura, this has been just a wonderful presentation and discussion um, and really look, uh, look forward to checking into some of those resources you've provided us. So thank you so much um, yeah. for doing this tonight. Thank you all. I'm so happy to have been here. It was very nice to connect with you and look forward to um, hearing how the letters go. If you stop sharing your screen, yeah, then everybody can see each other again. Okay. And then we can all, let's see. Yeah, now we can all give you a big hand because that was just great. Oh, that's great. And so thank you. Love it. Yeah, thank you all so much. It was really a pleasure. Thank you, Joanne, for bringing her to us. Yes. Well, she was so wonderful. I had to give it a try. I'm so glad you were able to come back in the fall. Yeah, happy to be here. I just um, am in my house, so I had a window. <laughs> Thanks so much. Well, we'll be following you and seeing what, what classes you're teaching and workshops you're holding. So that sounds great. Thank you all so much. Thank you. Good night. Thanks, everybody, for coming tonight. Thanks, Carol. Thanks for coming, Melanie. It's so nice to see you. Thank you, President. Yes. <laughs> hey, I'm proud of that title again. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I can I can go to the her website and get her post office box and send her a check. Yes, please do. Thank you, Lee. Okay. Thanks. You can send me one too. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When Melanie, you, you want uh, one? When you, you when, you lead, when you lead a meeting, you get one. Oh, okay. Well, uh, oh. Yes, President. We could give Carol five dollars each time for for doing the uh, the hard work. That's my get rich quick scheme. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, right. Well, just to comment on her her uh, library, I contributed to it and had no idea who she was. But um, Powell's one time had make a contribution at to them and your name would be entered into you know something and i didn't care about winning the books but i thought golly gee that's the greatest idea in the world to bring books to the people who are so i'm so delighted to have met the person that's